round table within the um, urban um, urban forum dedicated to cities um, uh, which are friendly uh, to um, the elderly people. My name is Vladimir, Fili Vladimir Filipov. I'm deputy head of uh, Labor and Social Protection Department uh, of Moscow Population. I work uh, in the team uh, of uh, Mayor of Moscow, Mr. Sabianian, and also I'm a, co um, a coordinator of the topic dedicated to longevity. I think many people participate in this program, not only like consumers, uh, users, but also like uh, suppliers of services. Our program is Moscow Longevity, was created 1.5 years ago, and uh, we want uh, to make uh, Moscow age-friendly city and also to prolong healthy age of the elderly people. For us, um, this policy regarding the elderly people is very important. Sociologists uh, say that all uh, metropolises uh, suffer this, uh, have this problem of uh, uh, old people, but for us it's not a problem, it's um, vice versa, a very good uh, thing, because now in Moscow we have about uh, 3 million people uh, at the age 55 um, plus and even older. After uh, 2030, in accordance with our forecast uh, in Moscow, we'll have uh, more than 4 million people of this age, 55 plus, and in ten, 2010, uh, average life expectancy in the city was uh, more than 70 years old, and now the life expectancy, average life expectancy, uh, 78 years old, and after 2030, the average life expectancy in our city, in accordance with our forecast, will reach uh, 86 years old. And this is um, uh, this are good. Uh, this is good pace. Um, uh, together with the development of medical technologies, it will allow us uh, to live not longer, uh, but also uh, uh, to preserve our. Uh, good uh, lifestyle. This program, Moscow Longevity, is also aimed uh, at um, violating um, uh, this uh, not so good stereotypes uh, about the elderly people, because in the Soviet Union we had uh, some stereotypes, uh, and now those people who are 60, they are not old ladies anymore. They even take offense when you call them like this. These are not people uh, who are only cook uh, and uh, spend time with their uh, grandchildren. These are people who spend uh, um, their life very good, actively, and they are not different so much already from people who are aged 40 or 50. 20 percent of, of Moscow pensioners uh, from 60 to 70 years old uh, continue to work, and not only uh, because um, uh, they want money. Of course, they need money. Everybody needs money, but they need uh, uh, to express themselves. Uh, Five percent uh, of these uh, people, uh, um, you know, they also work. Uh, those people work uh, who are above 65, uh, and even people who also people who uh, work in cultural sphere. What about modern cities? How should they change uh, for us to feel uh, well and? Uh, in a comfortable way. I would like to introduce Olga Grachova, uh, Director of Gerontological um, Center, uh, Joe Ivy Buford, uh, the President of the International Society of Urban Health, uh, Andres Triska, the Head of Department of Urban Development and Planning of Vienna, Nils Lund, Vice President of Nova Nordisk. Uh, uh, this is a pharmaceutical company and it produces more than 50 percent of uh, global insulin. And also we have uh, Maria Grudina, co-founder, director on development of the first line healthcare resort. 
and also Alexander Skrbela, director of the uh, foundation, the elderly, um, but he will come soon. We have seven minutes uh, for presentation. Some people also uh, also have to go. First question is for Olga Tkachova. Uh, before speaking uh, about uh, cities who are friendly towards the elderly, we should understand. Uh, so from uh, from your point of view, uh, is here, uh, you know, this old age, is it subjective or objective? What is it, old age? Uh, thank you, Vladimir. I can say that the growth of expected life expectancy, uh, this is global uh, as a thin, and I agree with you. We often say global uh, problem of aging, but it's not a problem, it's an accomplishment. And uh, aging, you cannot even uh, call this process as aging, and I can explain why. Very often, I can't, unfortunately, I cannot click. Who can help us here? <coughs> Very often, um, uh, so uh, so uh, uh, how long people can live? And now we can see the champion, uh, global world champion. Uh, this is a French lady, Jeanne Louisa Calman. Uh, she uh, lived 122 years for 20, 122 years and 164 days, and uh, she's a champion. Nobody coped. No, nobody else uh, reached this age. Okay, next slide. And here, please uh, look uh, uh, at how the dynamics uh, of life uh, expectancy uh, changes. At the beginning of the century, the maximum uh, jump uh, was uh, in younger uh, ages, but now we reached uh, some uh, limit. We can see 100 years old. Um, and then uh, we cannot cope with this um, level. Uh, so we can have um, an, uh, an average life expectancy, but the maximum of life expectancy stopped uh, to grow. This is only 100 years. So there is no further dynamics, not more than 100 years. Now we uh, speak about uh, these fluctuations. So we can have 115, uh, maybe. This is maximum life expectancy, uh, but uh, maybe pharmacology will help us in the future in some other areas, maybe help come. Also, I would like um, again come back uh, to the issue about aging. Uh, do we say right uh, uh, that when we say aging of people? Now we can see slowing down of uh, aging process. We can see um, a compression of diseases. We can see life expectancy increase, but also uh, we can see healthy life expectancy increase. Uh, but life expectancy with diseases. Uh, and uh, there are some periods of life when people need external help, but this uh, does, do not change, does not change. So next slide, please. Now we can come to a conclusion uh, that a person aged 50 years old uh, in 2000, uh, so this is practically six years old in 2018. From the point of view of his biological opportunities, uh, from uh, his biological health. So scientists say um, that people aged 50, 55 plus, these, uh, these are people of new generation uh, who have 20, 25 years of active life, good life, peak life, when people uh, continue to develop, not only live actively even, but also develop and now um, we have the generation of 50-year-old people. This is a new generation, and it's different from what we had 10, 15 years ago, and even more years ago. Uh, these are people with good education, with good health, because usually they lead healthy lifestyle, and it's very fashionable now, this healthy lifestyle. People with experience, um, and uh, from the point of view of uh, gerontology, this is like this. Next slide. Um, uh, so here you can see um, uh, the position of WHO. 
WHO uh, sp says about the change of paradigm of the healthy aging. Several years ago, we said uh, we spoke about the healthy aging. Now we discuss the city for people, elderly people, uh, uh, for whom the city should be comfortable. Uh, so they should not have diseases. They should have social status and uh, enough money. But also, we have another term: successful aging. Uh, I'm understand that I'm running out of time, but uh, successful aging is very uh, is a new one uh, because here we add a sense of humor, looks, um, uh, as goals, um, education. So successful aging, it's not uh, like uh, uh, going uh, uh, to the level where we support our activity and support our health. It's continuation of development. And for in this context, it's very important uh, uh, to create um, uh, appropriate surroundings and conditions for this. Uh, and I think uh, we'll speak about Moscow today more because in Moscow we uh, create conditions for this uh, successful aging. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Olga. Our urban forum is international, uh, uh, and um, here in Moscow uh, we can see the city where we have changes. But Moscow it's a global city as well, and uh, when we do this um, uh, policy in Moscow, for us it's very important to compare uh, ourselves with uh, uh, other metropolises. Now I would like to ask uh, uh, the question question uh, to Joe Ivy Buford, President of the International Society of Urban Health. The International Society of um, Urban Health um, is striving uh, to make the topic of healthy city interdisciplinary. And how do you change uh, politics uh, of the cities uh, regarding the elderly people? Uh, how does your attitude change uh, uh, to these people who have old age? Uh, thank you very much. I think part of the answer to your question is we try in all of our international meetings and conversations to include sessions about older people in the city. And I think we, we just need to make it normal as opposed to only focusing on the health care issues or social care issues, which is often the focus. I'm going to try to move very quickly, but I did want to share um, the implementation of Age-Friendly New York City, which began in 2007. Um, and we're now uh, into our 12th year and second mayor. So I just uh, want to go through this very quickly. Thank you for introducing the broader determinants and the, uh, the uh, WHO model. We adopted the WHO model um, as this is the New York Academy of Medicine, which is a nonprofit um, sort of think tank, do tank, um, getting the evidence together, getting the expertise from international agencies working with um, Mayor Bloomberg at the time. Um, this is the model that WHO uses. As my colleague said, um, aging is a great public health success story when you consider the alternative uh, in terms of life expectancy. Um, and the whole age-friendly movement is really around healthy and active aging with the focus on creating environments um, that allow people not to drop below that yellow line, which is a disability threshold. So this notion of lifespan is that from the very beginning of life, we're all exposed to different uh, medical problems, different environmental ch challenges. Um, and if we can stay healthy and long, we, we would have a trajectory, but we can change the environment to make that trajectory longer. Um, the idea of the domains of age-friendly cities was really developed um, with WHO and 35 pilot cities at the beginning. Um, they did a very simple thing, and this is the hallmark of age-friendly. Um, you ask older people what makes it harder or easier for them to live in their neighborhood, and they tell you. Um, and then you do what they tell you, um, and you can't get it wrong because you're responding to their needs. So if you'll notice here, I think the important thing about this slide is that community support and health service is only one of eight things that older people felt was important. And when we tend to, especially in countries like the United States, I don't know if it's true here, we focus on how the tsunami of older people is going to destroy the health care system and swamp the pension system. And we don't think about the fact that from an older person's point of view, there are different approaches. So why would a mayor of New York City be interested? In implementing this program, uh, the answer is pretty simple. Um, in the year 2025, there will be more people in New York City over 60 than school children. Um, so any elected official has to think about that, the implications of that for the city. We also, as a 
um, NGO, we mapped on uh, the city, this is the five boroughs of New York, uh, by council manic district, we have a city council, so each of those squares belongs to an elected official, um, and we showed them where older people live in their district. And the red ones are where over 25% of the population is over 65. Um, this gets the attention of politicians because older people vote in the United States and they buy local. So if you have local officials that are interested in economic development, you want to focus um, your efforts on working with older persons. The essence of Age Friendly is really based on the perspectives of older people. We consulted with over 2,000 older people in 14 different hearings, have pulled together across the city uh, by council, city council members, looking at other immigrant groups, multiple languages. Um, the mayor created a public-private partnership called the Age Friendly Commission, which brought in business, brought in academia, brought in experts in healthcare to the conversation. Um, and then the mayor um, secured agency commissions, commitments um, from New York City agencies, over 13 at the beginning of our program. Um, so the, the essence of this is we asked older people about a set of segments. This is the New York City um, Transit Authority subway map, um, which is a little less organized than the one the mayor showed the other day, or at least it's a little more fragmented. We asked older people what were the problems in transportation, and they noted um, stairs, they have no place to rest, uh, they don't have time to cross the street, um, the signs are too small, and there's no light um, in the bus stops, so they can't read what um, they're being suggested uh, to find their way. So these were the solutions created by the New York City Department of Transportation. This is a bus shelter. These are paid for by the private sector in New York only for their advertising. The advertising was shifted to one side rather than covering the entire walls of the, of the shelter where people were afraid to sit. Um, the font was increased, and you'll notice the bench put there, there are little handles on the bench so someone can push themselves up um, to get up and to move. Um, I, they also, there were timers put on, uh, on uh, stoplights in the city, and the important thing is these are things the Department of Transportation was going to do anyway, and all we said is what would you, how would you do it differently if you thought about the needs of older people? So they put the stop signs in the communities with the highest concentration of older people first. They didn't have to spend more money, they didn't have to change their policy, they didn't have to do anything different. Um, another opportunity at the neighborhood level, because this ha is really about older people living in neighborhoods, the top priority for um, the East Harlem neighborhood, which is one of our poorest neighborhoods in New York, is a beautiful public pool. Older people um, were afraid to go there because the kids were doing what these kids are doing, what normal kids do. Um, so then we negotiated with the city parks department um, senior hours, where the, old, the kids um, don't start swimming until 9 or 10, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. The seniors come, they are comfortable to swim, um, and over for five years, this program was implemented in every public swimming pool in New York. So you begin one community, um, you end up with a citywide um, example. Uh, con contrast to this is the Upper West Side, very um, affluent neighborhood. They were very involved. They wanted free tickets to Lincoln Center and Juilliard to hear concerts, um, and the Juilliard people needed an audience. So it was a win-win for everybody, and the issue was transportation um, to the performances. This was all different and different. This is the impact after three years. Um, 13 city agencies continued to work together. Business community very involved. We have something called business improvement districts in New York. Um, they trained their staff, they worked with businesses to get stickers so people would know um, whether to use them or not, the bus shelters, the, the uh, benches I showed you in the swimming hours. Um, this is the result of 12 years of work. These are toolkits that are available online um, for a whole set of sectors. These have been developed in partnership with these sectors. Uh, the housing people were a big issue for most communities, healthcare systems and the arts and public safety. Um, and uh, lessons learned, I only want to focus on uh, one or two. One is that approaches that change the environment are more effective than those that try to change behavior. This is true with health across all policies. Uh, low cost and no cost interventions. What are agencies going to do anyway? How would they do it differently if they had the evidence that showed the advantages to older people? Um, this is the resource. Uh, 
if you want to get anything you want to know about New York City Age Friendly is uh, Lindsay Goldman at um, agefriendlynewyorkcity.org. All of these materials are public um, domain and available to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The experience of New York is clearly very interesting because for many people in the world, this is something which similarly works very well. But in order to check with uh, this is true or not, and to what uh, takeaways are there for Moscow, we have to exchange this experience, got inspired, and travel more. I'd like to pass the floor to another global city, also very romantic, no less romantic than New York. Andres Triska, tell us please about Vienna, because Vienna. This is the city which gave its name to Vienna Plan, a basic plan for the elderly. This is about digital technologies construction and master planning. Vienna launched a program on research about integration of the everyday technologies into the life of the elderly. So Andreas, tell us please, what cases are there in Vienna which helped the elderly feel most convenient in this city. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, you have to know I'm an urban planner, so I come from the urban planning perspective. And uh, when it comes to how can we accommodate cities for elderly people, make it good, there is the space that is out of the houses and there is the space that is in the houses. So I talk about the two things a bit. Uh, here you have the, the numbers uh, in Vienna. The important thing is we are, we already know, we're getting more older, which is a, really a success story. And also the share of the people with uh, age over 60 in Vienna is, is growing, as well as the share of the people that are under 15. So uh, what are the strategies in urban planning? And one thing is the power of active mobility. If you walk a half an hour a day or you cycle half an hour a day, your life expectancy gets higher. Studies say two to seven years, and also you're stronger and more vigorous and, and healthier. So it's really important to move active mobility, walking and cycling. And what we like to say is a city from 8 to 80, it's like a good slogan, because a city that is good for a child with eight years and for an elderly person with 80 years is good for everybody, so everybody can use it. So what do you have to do? You have to do gender and age sensible uh, city planning and that is about how do, you, how do you make your public spaces, how do you organize the traffic. A big issue coming now to us in Central Europe for especially is the climate change. Uh, change uh, the city is getting hotter, and so you have to s do something about it. And also, as you showed the swimming pools. There are there are playgrounds for for people, uh, for adult people, where you can train. And this is important to provide uh, stuff like that in in a city. Uh, okay, so here. I won't go through this. This is a chart. We did a, a big interview with children and seniors, and here you have a lot of things they have to gather in needs and then some specialities, but it's about infrastructure, it's about tidiness, aesthetics, subjective, subjective safety, objective safety, and social needs. So you have to consider that. You can study this. It will be online, so you know uh, where, where you should go. And this is true for both the build-up city, when you refurbish, you should think of, think of that, make it a plane, give way to cyclists, to, to walk in, make shady uh, um, situations. And it also is true when you design new quarters. You have to make great public spaces, look that the people can move safely and joyfully. When it comes to accommodation, what is it going on in the houses, uh, the thing is, uh, it's about living a self-determined life in an in, in environment. And one big trend in Vienna right now is there are communes for elderly people. So, so there are five, six uh, elderly people, age of 50, top more, or 60, they move together, and together they can afford to hire someone that helps them in the household, or also to help, have a, a bit of um, help with their daily lives. And another thing, and this is now coming to the thing you asked, uh, to me, it's also 
about assisted living. It's both physically but also digitally. And there is now a program going on in Vienna. It's like a test region for active and assisted living. It's a program. Checked. This is uh, funded by some funds of, of ministries here, and we are preparing uh, people that are older than 60 years in more than 80 test households, giving them digital supplies, and we also have a group of people that are doing without supplies. And I skip to it very, very large, uh, very, very fast. The service packages. Uh, Mobility is important, we all heard that, but it's about safety, it's about health, and it's about communication. And there's a service package for communication. They get a handheld, an iPad, or something like that, and this, everything is prepared for the needs of the elderly. It's about how big is the, the, the letter you, you use, and about everything. And so they can work on that. They get a package for safety. They have a function that is alarm. If they're in trouble, they can give a digital alarm. There is surveillance. If they, if they fall down, there will be the alarm. Uh, and they have a, a mobile emergency call. And there is the package of health. They are monitored by doctors. They also have uh, a device um, which measures certain things. And this is all not new. This is all existing things in the market just put together into a program. Uh, you, here you see this is things that are on the market. It is not, not rocket science. Uh, and this is the, the health package. You have blood pressure. They, they, they check on their weight, the, the insulin they have, how, how, many, uh, how far they walk, how many passes they do, how they are, diabetes things and they can comment on it and so they are prepared, the households are prepared like that. And oh, this is the timeline, it's not so important. We're right, we're now at the end of the program and we will eva evaluate it. If I may come here next year, I can give you the, the, the results. Uh, but uh, oh, another thing is, what is important that is, it works is it's always the social Pro process you have. You have to inform people, invite them, and, and then they happy to, to share. And a big su success of this thing, because in, 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 in our modern societies, it's always uh, about being alone, not having social contacts, and the older you get, the harder it is, because all your people you know, they die. So what's a big, big uh, issue is, and big exit, uh, big, big success is that we have they have like a, a coffee where they meet, they have uh, meetings every like two or three weeks and they help each other out with the devices so they learn from each other and they have, they make new friends. So, and this is really a good side of this project. And this is it, Spasiba, I'm in my time, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Andreas. And I would like to pass the floor to our next speaker. Getting prepared for that session, we talked a little bit beforehand and we found out that we all started with dealing with the youth issues. And now we are dealing with the elderly. Nils Lund, Vice President from Novo Nordisk, um, Serious Change in Diabetes. This is a program which works with many cities of the world. And uh, this is about not only one city, but this is about some megatrends. They keep track of how the urban environment changes in order to adapt for the elderly. I have the question, I have a question. What do the studies show? What changes we can expect regarding the elderly, uh, how they live in the megacities in the urban environment? I think we need to have oh. Sorry, I think we need to uh, have the other presentation. Uh, no, this this is not my presentation because I'm not very good in, uh, in Russian. Not, a, not very good in Russian. I also впечатлился. I got impressed already with your Russian language fluency. So so uh, thank you for the uh, the opportunity. Um, when uh, we are very much into it, uh, to uh, to be able to address uh, the challenges of uh, a city. We need to understand the social factors and the cultural determinants. It's you know getting two steps below the surface that will really help us uh, understand what uh, what the, what uh, risk people have and and how they cope with them. 
If we look at diabetes, uh, and that is uh, our area of specialty, uh, also increasingly uh, obesity, we can see that uh, in the year 2000, 4.6% uh, of the world's population had, uh, had diabetes. It is now almost doubled, 9.1%, uh, and it's expected to, uh, to grow to 12% uh, to or even higher with the trends that we see uh, already now. There, there are factors that, that drive that. Aging is one. So the demographic transition that societies are going through, we all, you know, the societies are becoming uh, older, and that's what we saw in the first pre presentation, has an impact on diabetes because age is a, uh, is a, uh, is a risk factor for, for diabetes. And I think there's an important lesson for Moscow and also for, for, for Russia here. When you look at the prevalence for, for diabetes in this country, it's actually quite low. But, it's, uh, uh, but as you go towards the, uh, the, the strategy of getting to, uh, to 80, you will also get diabetes into, in, in, into the system and into, the, into real life. The, one of the fortunate things to get, today we can keep people alive with diabetes, but we also there's the challenge of turning the tide and, and keeping the lid on, on diabetes, because otherwise, uh, simply from a uh, a cost perspective to, uh, to the health system, but also from a quality of life perspective, it is a, it is a, a critical uh, risk factor for society and for individual health. So as I said, what are the drivers of, uh, of that? Uh, there are the things we can change. Aging is difficult. I mean, we shouldn't change that. Uh, genetics, ethnicity, those are factors that, that, are, that are fixed. But there are also the factors that are not so fixed but difficult to change. Obesity, nutrition, the setting in which you live, uh, um, you know, both inside the, the house but also the community in, in which you live. And it's the, in that cross-section, if you have multiple risk factors, your risk of diabetes gets higher. And, and so if you have old age with, uh, with obesity and uh, nutrition, uh, you know, bad nutrition and in, a, in an unsafe environment, those, those uh, risk factors accumulate and, and, uh, and, and, and then makes the risk of diabetes even higher. Obesity is the single most important factor that we can do something about. And, uh, and that's obesity, you know, uh, is affected by the way we live. The, what we, uh, how we exercise, and, 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 and how we live our lives, and the quality of the food that we, that, that we get. And that is actually why we, uh, five years ago, started a partnership now with 22 cities around the world, where we're trying to uh, take a new look at, uh, at, at how we can uh, prevent the diabetes. Right now, with, uh, as I said, 22, countries, uh, also 22 cities covering 150 million uh, uh, citizens around the world, in China, in the US, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Italy, not yet in Russia, but maybe we'll get there one day. Important for us is to understand uh, things from a quality. Think about participating in your program. <laughs> yes, very good. So uh, for us, it's, it's very important that we both understand things from a quantitative perspective, uh, so the biomedical domain, but also things from a qualitative perspective, because by understanding both aspects, that is when we can inf inform local uh, interventions and, and policies. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the quantitative uh, for, for a second. We work with something called the rule of halves um, in, in diabetes, and it actually works a little bit the same in all other chronic diseases. Uh, so if, if you say that the ones who have diabetes is 100%, then on a global level, only half of no, half of, uh, or 50 percent of those actually know they have it. So they have been diagnosed. Of that 50 percent, only half of those are actually treated. And of those, only half of them get a good treatment outcome. And only half of them live a life like it would be without diabetes. Of course, there is variations uh, from place to place, rich country, poor country, and so on. But this is the global level. As far as I understand it, the, there's a big difference. You know, the, you know, half of the people who live in Russia with diabetes don't really know it. So there's an enorm enormous opportunity uh, to, uh, to understand who actually have, have diabetes. But the really, you know, if you can close the influx of people into, into uh, getting diabetes, the first pillar, that is where you can, you know, you can save money from the, from the beginning. And that's why prevention of, of diabetes and obesity is, is really important here. But understanding the biomedical factors, you know, the heart, uh, 
blood pressure, lipids, blah, 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 blood sugar, that's, that's really important, but the underlying factors are just as important, and, but they're more difficult to see. And what are those? So the social factors, those are the financial constraints, you know, what is preventing me from going to exercise class where I don't have the money, I don't have the time, time constraints. I spend uh, two hours a day in my car, I don't have time to, uh, to buy healthy foods and uh, 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 less to exercise. Uh, other resource constraints that you know, I feel lonely and, and it's difficult for, for me to get from, uh, from A to B. And then at the deeper level, there, there are the cultural uh, determinants. You know, when uh, traditions and conventions, um, you know, I, I'm just stuck in the food pattern that I, that I live in. Um, the view of, of health and illness, uh, what, what am I in, in connection with others, or is it just the new normal of being a little bit bigger than it was 10 years ago? And then also the trends and, and, and transitions. Yes, Moscow is on a track for very positive development, but there are also places, uh, I assume in this city, and I don't know, but uh, otherwise Moscow would be a unique place on earth where you know, you close down some neighborhoods, populations move out, and, and transition uh, in, in place is actually a stressor for, for, for many, uh, particularly elderly. And understanding these cultural determinants uh, uh, and the social factors are essential for, for, uh, for, for understanding what you then should do. There are many practical ways of, of doing it, but, but it's critical for the success of your... And now we'll have the voice of God. This is not for us. This is an authorized advertisement for a different session. Was, I'm, I'm so close. Maybe it was the signal that I should end now. But my point is that understanding these factors, particularly with, with elderly, but, but also across the populations, are, are critical for have, you know, this, the success of programs like the ones in, in, in Vienna, the ones in New York City, and also the ones in, in Moscow. We have uh, uh, collated... If I can get the next slide. Yes. We have... Uh, uh, there we go. There we go. We have uh, we've worked for th with this for five years, and we have actually created a toolbox both to f facilitate uh, this type of analysis, both on a quantitative as well as a qualitative level in, in the cities. It's available in cityschangediabetes.com and public domain, and everyone can use it, maybe also with our help, also without our help. Uh, and, uh, and, and we do that you know, in, a, in a spirit of trying to, uh, to reduce the risk of diabetes and obesity across the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nils. Actually, you said very right words, very much needed ones, because uh, all the mega cities, all the big cities, regardless of the countries they're located, uh, are common, and the tendencies uh, which we see in terms of obesity and diabetes, this is a real problem. Uh, for instance, unlike uh, the problem of aging, for instance, if it is a problem, and what you are doing is uh, a very right thing to do, and we'll think uh, very seriously about your invitation to engage in uh, your program. But speaking about the city development, uh, age-friendly cities, we cannot but avoid the topic of uh, long-term care, because actually, however, um, healthcare system progresses. Uh, still, there are certain illnesses and diseases uh, which have to be treated for quite a while, uh, and the elderly they need this cure. So, I'd like to pass the floor to Alexander Skrebel, a director of the Elderly Foundation, and uh, they specialize in uh, uh, some focused and targeted care for the elderly. This is what the mayor of Moscow pays a special attention to. We understand that this is one of the biggest our objectives. Long-term care. We understand that we have to make a real progress within a very short period of time in order to streamline everything. So, Alexander, I will not even uh, suggest any questions. You may actually define the problem a proper way. 
спасибо большое. Thank you very much. Now, just in a few words, I would like to speak some things which I consider to be very important for cities. Dear colleagues, uh, the system uh, of um, long-term care uh, is uh, a system of uh, cooperation of different agencies and organizations uh, uh, aimed at different people with different um, conditions. Now we work in many uh, cities, in many subjects. We work uh, also with the authorities of the subjects. And now we create new services, social services uh, uh, for citizens. It is very important to build uh, the services in social concept of city development. This is the key issue of uh, a successful realization of development, uh, city development. Here, I would like uh, to focus on one service. Uh, this is the center of um, daily stay. Uh, usually, uh, the elderly people uh, got used uh, to uh, to be there. This is the place um, which um, should um, be prevention of so-called loneliness. Now, we add this function, function also expanded. Also, uh, this covers uh, citizens with different um, deficits. Uh, first of all, uh, cognitive disorders. Um, uh, the second, um, uh, the um, mobility, uh, the physically challenged people, and sensor deficit. Th here, we launch um, these uh, objects, um, and we. You know, we uh, develop agglomeration in this way. Actually, uh, we give uh, uh, some possibilities uh, for these elderly people and uh, different objects work on the one hand. But on the other hand, uh, those families um, which live in cities, uh, uh, they get uh, good support. What do I mean here? What support do I mean here? First of all, uh, we launch the services. We start to work with citizens um, in a long-term way. Why do we call the system long-term care? Because the system um, uh, is should be um, should continue to work, you know, long term. And here, step by step, uh, we pull out a person from the heavy state uh, to a good state. And how do we do this? Uh, we give this person uh, the services he needs. Uh, and here again, I should, I should I would like to uh, to draw your attention to the center of daily stay. What else would I like to stay here? Not to say here, the center also in Moscow is also in Moscow. It's one of the elements which uh, is being realized under the concept of city development and agglomeration development. The format of this development uh, is significant. And the key thing in choice of this format um, is its universality and also um, uh, so its possibility. But we can um, use uh, such format on different venues. We can launch um, uh, this. Um, uh, this program in different uh, uh, neighborhoods of cities. And also we launch different formats of work, but we combine uh, their functionality under one roof. I mean, the center of this daily stay uh, can be combined with social canteen, can be combined with the complex social um, service of population. Uh, also, it can be combined uh, with the specialized center, which works uh, with population. So this is community center. And this module constructions uh, <coughs> soon uh, will appear in different uh, cities of the Russian Federation. We have launched um, only a pilot project. But uh, now we can see that the effect uh, from implementation of the system is uh, huge. And we uh, started to digitalize this. Now we can see that more than 10% of people who are in this uh, project uh, increase their status. Uh, 
functional status. Uh, for example, people uh, could not move, now they uh, they can go out from bed. Uh, uh, people were really physically challenged, uh, they couldn't move practically at all, but now these people start moving. Uh, and these people start do some, some perform functions which uh, uh, he did not perform earlier. And here also it's very important uh, to use these uh, services properly. We should form it um, in a good uh, proper format. Um, and once again, it's uh, very important uh, uh, to have these objects, um, uh, to, e to build these objects in social strategy of agglomeration development, because uh, these objects uh, can be combined with other services, for example, medical, social, uh, uh, and uh, they uh, form uh, some kind of networks uh, which help uh, people to work, um, which help uh, people people uh, uh, to live uh, his life better. How does it work? If we imagine some uh, um, some things, for example, the center of daily uh, stay, and it w can have a focus uh, on uh, cognitive deviation, people with cognitive deviations uh, disorders. And here we can launch these um, objects for one person uh, at the same time. So he will have a lot of services um, together. And then uh, we get an opportunity um, uh, to develop seriously of some concrete systems, for example, learn to um, here. Also, we can develop agglomeration due to such social um, out of the box solutions. Um, and if we look at the international um, cases, uh, they, we can see that such solutions work in many countries. And uh, these um, solutions are very effective. They are used in Israel, Great Britain, and so on and so forth. Uh, in many countries, we uh, work with people, um, uh, is built up um, Oh, in uh, uh, an, in an interdisciplinary way now um, uh, tw 20 subjects already participate in this uh, uh, project but within four next years 85 uh, subjects uh, should be covered by this project and uh, uh, project of long term stay of long term care sorry and i i'm sure that soon we'll have this in many cities in the main cities <clears throat> and then uh, uh, the personal should be friendly also. Uh, it's, a, it's a joke, of course. But I think that's very important because uh, infrastructural decisions can be here. It's, they are important. But people uh, who care, uh, they should also be friendly. And also 70 percent. Uh, 70% uh, of resource uh, we spend for training people to smile. And I think this is a, a big problem for them, for personal. Okay, I think our foreign um, colleagues, um, um, maybe um, so also, also they can look at this interesting figure, but uh, if we admit mistakes, uh, it's already a huge step forward. Uh, and uh, in Russia, we always, um, uh, we always um, you know, uh, hit some problems, but now we speak uh, openly about them. Um, you know, I uh, will ask uh, this uh, question uh, to our other participant, Maria Grudina, co-founder, uh, director on development of uh, healthcare resort. Uh, the first line: What uh, uh, should do 40-year-old people, 30-year-old people um, to? Uh, to feel uh, uh, the same way as now uh, when they are 70. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, so, you know, it was very interesting uh, uh, to hear uh, to the colleague present colleagues' presentations. Uh, I can see uh, a lot of uh, young people, uh, young faces uh, in our audience. Uh, but this problem of aging uh, should be of interest uh, uh, to young people because now medicine have unique opportunity has unique opportunities uh, to prolong youth and also to achieve active uh, longevity. And uh, we have some perquisitions for this active uh, uh, longevity, but it can be done, um, uh, uh, you know, at 30, 40 years when people are still uh, uh, active. 
Two years ago, uh, we um, uh, created uh, a pilot project. Uh, uh, this is inno an innovative project, a healthcare resort first line. And here uh, we um, also uh, perform this um, project uh, of um, individual medicine. Our personalized medicine, I will speak about the principles of our approach and also I will speak about international trends which allow people to live longer and better. So now we understand that all medicine is based uh, on uh, a person and uh, his or her needs. Um, and now um, people don't only want to prevent uh, diseases, they want um, to prevent it actively. And medicine has tools um, to maximize uh, efficiency of this uh, work. Um, uh, and uh, medicine can help to develop uh, uh, gene um, technologies, a digital revolution also gives good tools. Uh, each person uh, can uh, research his life and also uh, draw out some tools uh, which, which could allow him uh, to become healthier and more active. And uh, at present, we speak more about treatment of diseases, about checkups, but uh, future medicine is based on prevention of diseases and health monitoring uh, with uh, a goal to support healthy lifestyle because 70 percent of a uh, person's health, uh, um, you know, depends um, on uh, uh, depends on environment and lifestyle, and we want um, uh, to. Um, uh, you know, um, influence on this uh, with the help of complex program at this uh, healthcare resort. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, quite young people come to us, like 40 years old, 30 years old, and in accordance uh, with this, with our research, uh, possible age, uh, possible life expectancy is 120 years old, uh, and 60, 70 years old uh, become uh, uh, become just a uh, quite um, a young age age for people and uh, people uh, can stay still um, uh, quite um, you know healthy and active at this age uh, and uh, here we try um, uh, to educate people how to do sports uh, how to uh, choose food uh, and so on <coughs> can you click the slide click to another slide Uh, so at this uh, healthcare resort, uh, we developed seven uh, programs, uh, and each uh, program includes uh, diagnostics, uh, uh, then uh, consultations, uh, and uh, physicians develop a strategy uh, which uh, include all components: uh, nutrition, f nutrition, sleep, uh, and uh, physical activities. So we um, uh, develop a long-term strategy for each person, and monitor to his uh, health with the help of uh, applications, gadgets, uh, and people every day uh, can be connected with a, with, a, with his uh, physician. He can monitor his uh, vitals and also he can improve them and also monitor dynamics. So we have experience uh, of um, work with uh, 60,000 guests, 16% guests, uh, of them uh, are people who uh, can be considered quite uh, old people. but. Uh, of course, uh, people who are now 35, um, uh, 55 years, uh, they uh, get better results. They lose weight better. They improve um, uh, their um, physical activities. Um, and this, uh, just a simple change of lifestyle change uh, dramatically uh, their health and help them um, uh, to um, prevent some diseases. So here you can see a 62-year-old, uh, the case of 62 year old um, patient, 80% um, uh, also of our guests, um, uh, they change uh, their lifestyle drastically and uh, their physical activity. Uh, we offer uh, to create a network uh, of um, uh, such, um, you know, uh, such outpatient uh, centers uh, of preventive medicine. I think we should not treat uh, the current diseases, but also uh, we should prevent um, diseases. Um, we train uh, physicians from different cities, uh, people, uh, physicians from St. Petersburg, from other cities. Also, we have 
online service on Doc. Uh, we create an um, online platform where people can go through online tests. Um, they can understand uh, here what tests they need to go through at their age. And also we plan to create um, also such an online uh, platform to train uh, physicians. We want to draw out uh, the unified standard of preventive medicine. And in conclusion, I would like to mention another trend in medicine. Uh, this is uh, making a patient responsible for his health. I think it's uh, crucial because in traditional medicine, approaches are different and uh, people, um, uh, people have to uh, preserve uh, um, his uh, health at home and at work, uh, gadgets, mobile medicine allow to do this. Uh, people can monitor their health um, themselves. Here you can see a guideline on medicine of the future, highlighted by green. We can see innovations which are already implemented, uh, highlighted by yellow innovations which will happen in the future, and also highlighted by red. Uh, uh, these are the um, innovations which will also be uh, executed and here you can see um, uh, that now medicine is, digi is being digitalized um, we can have opportunities uh, also to um, implement the latest development in lives of every person thank you very much Maria I think uh, we are running out of time now but um, uh, for each uh, of our uh, panelists uh, I uh, prepared uh, a question uh, but then I thought uh, that uh, maybe uh, they could wish something us, uh, um, uh, you know, maybe they could have uh, three um, sentences about longevity, about health. Uh, but we have social networks, uh, and our discussion can be continued also on sites, on forums. Uh, uh, that's why I would like to thank our um, participants uh, now, and um, let's uh, pl please give a round uh, uh, to applause. Uh, uh, let's uh, applaud to everybody, to Maria Grudina, to Jo Ivy Buford, please, uh, a round of applause to her, uh, Nils Lund, uh, and Andrea Strisko. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. Um, I would like, uh, I would like to declare uh, this um, uh, that here then we'll have the lecture uh, of uh, the president center for active design I own frank she will speak about uh, food policy of cities please stay with us thank you very much